Hi, welcome to sixth grade math. This is lesson 138. We're going to start off with some division review. All right. 72 divided by 6, 12. Hopefully you got that. 42 divided by 6, 7. 48 divided by 6, 8. 25 divided by 5, 5. Uh, 20 divided by 5. The answer would be 4. 48 divided by 4, 12. 21 divided by 3 would be 7. 12 divided by 4, that's 3. 27 divided by 3, 9. 24 divided by 3, 8. 36 divided by 4, 9. 18 divided by 6, the answer is 3. 24 divided by 6, 4. 40 divided by 5 would be 8. What about 18 divided by 3? 6. We saw 18 divided by 6, and so if you remembered, good job. 54 divided by 6, 9. 15 divided by 5, 3. 30 divided by 5, 6. And then 72 divided by 6, 12. If you didn't get that the first time, hopefully you got it the second. We are going to do a rapid calculation drill, so I'll get your listening ears ready. And I will go, I'll try not to go too fast. Um, you might have to pause the video if I'm going too fast and you figure it out, okay? 10 plus 10 divided by five times nine minus six. Divided by five times 12 divided by nine times eight minus 16. divided by four. All right, what'd you get? The answer should be 12, okay? I'm just break that down really fast. 10 plus 10 is 20, divided by five is four, times nine is 36, minus six is 30, divided by five is six, times 12 is 72, divided by nine is eight, times eight is 64, minus 16, that one was kind of the hardest part of this, minus 16 is 64. Sorry about that, I was having trouble with that. 64 minus 16 is 48, and then divided by four would be 12. All right, go ahead and pause the video and then you may take your speed drill. Um, be careful on those decimals, um, and if it's uh, multiplication, you add the number of decimal places and count that many in your answer um, from, the, from the right over. And if it is addition, you make sure you've lined your decimals up and you bring it straight down, as well as subtraction is the same way. Division, if you have a decimal in both of them, you have to move it as many places are, as are in your, um, the one on the outside. <laughs> I lost the name, um, divisor. As many times as are in that one, you move it, and then you have to move it the same number of times. If you have to add zeros, do that um, for the division, okay? Do well on that, and we'll be back in just a sec. All right, very good. Hopefully you did well with your, um, so with that speed drill. And we are gonna be looking at equations. Um, and, and this is just our, our initial introduction to algebra was last lesson. And um, these equations, solving equations is some of the stuff that um, 
if we're going to do it in small, small portions, and, and there's going to be a lot of things that we can, um, a lot of problems that are going to be fairly simple, and you're going to say, why is this so easy? But um, it prepares you for the harder stuff. And so we want to get this basic, simple stuff down, and then we can get the harder stuff. And so something that I have told you guys with with other things like maybe with a fraction and we have to um, make the same denominator what we do to the bottom what we multiply by the bottom we have to multiply the top by right that's where this principle comes from what you do to one side you have to do to the other okay so we're going to be doing a little bit of that this is an equation okay n n is an unknown number n plus six equals four times three. Okay, remember that raised dot is our multiplication sign now, okay? We could have used parentheses, but when we just have numbers, just two numbers like that, it's just easiest. It's like using your x, but we're gonna use a raised dot instead, okay? So this is an equation. An equation shows that two amounts are equal. The left side of the equation is equal to the right side. <clears throat> you see the equal sign, that's your equation symbol. The symbol is an equal sign. It shows that the two amounts are equal. The n, in algebraic expression of missing value, is represented with the letter of the alphabet. We use certain axioms or truths to find the value of the letter. These four truths are what we're going to be um, really learning. The same number may be added to both sides of the equation without changing the equality, okay? It can still be equal if we add the same number. So if right here, <clears throat> I could add a five over here, and I can add a five over here, and we still have an equal equation. I did the same thing on one side as I did to the other. Now we're not gonna mess up our, our simple equation by adding more numbers, but you can add, that's that first thing, you can add the same number, maybe added to both sides of an equation, without changing the equality, whether it's equal or not. The same number, name, <laughs> I'm sorry, the same number may be subtracted from both sides of an equation without changing the equality. So same thing, we could subtract five from both sides and we'd still have the same answer, okay? Now, both sides of an equation may be multiplied by the same number without changing the equality, okay? We can multiply five by both sides. We still would have an equal number, okay? Both sides of an equation may be divided by the same number, except zero, without changing the equality. We, cha we change everything when we throw zero in there for division. Um, zero could be, I mean, you could add zero to both sides. You could subtract zero from both sides. If you multiplied zero by both sides, we would get zero on both sides which still they would both be equal, but with division, it doesn't work the same with zero. So without, except for zero, both sides may be divided by the same number without changing the equality. As long as you do the same thing to both sides of the, the equation, to both sides, the equation remains balanced, okay? So first of all, with this one, dropped my marker okay we're going to simplify the, the easiest thing can we add in plus six not without knowing what n is right we can't add that until we know what n is but we can multiply four times three correct what, is, what do we get we get 12 okay so four times three is 12 we're gonna write the equation exactly as it is. N plus six equals 12, okay? Again, we're gonna rewrite the problem as we go down, like we've, like we've been doing with area and perimeter. That was preparing you for this, because this method, if we do not rewrite it, you are gonna get so confused, okay? So I want you to be following every instruction in this. To find the value of N, we must get n alone on one side of the equation. To get it alone, 
we have to remove the six, okay? How do you think we can remove the six? Okay, so this is plus six. What is the opposite of adding six? Subtracting six, okay? If we do have plus six minus six, what do we get? We get zero, which means that n is by itself, right? Now we have to, what we did to this side, we have to do to the other side. 12 minus six, right? And 12 minus six is what? Six, okay? Now we can plug this in to our original equation to check it, okay? That's, so this is what we're gonna do. So six goes in for n, so six plus six equals four times three, okay? Six plus six is 12 equals Four times three is 12. Guess what? 12 equals 12 is equal, okay? We did the problem correctly. We moved the six to this side after we simplified our multiplication, and we got in by itself, and we came up with the answer. And then six plus six is equal to 12, and four times three is equal to 12, which means that n is equal to six, okay? Do you see that? So this really, in this equation, this is your answer, not this. This is the answer, but this is our check. It's just like checking a division problem, okay? So you have your, your division problem where you multiply to check. That is not the answer, right? The answer is still at the top of the division problem. That's where this answer, that's, this answer is right here, but this checks to make sure that we did everything correctly. If we can plug the number back into the equation and it comes out as equal numbers, then we did it right, okay? So, we're going to look at x minus five equals 18 over two, okay? Which part can we do first? Can we, can we subtract five from x or can we divide 18 divided by two? Because remember that, that fraction bar also means division. And when we have a bigger number over a smaller number, we want to divide, right? So which one would we do first? We do the division, okay? So let's go ahead and write x minus 5 equals 18 divided by 2 is 9, right? Okay? Now this side we've got minus 5. So what are we going to do to take it away from this side? We have to add, okay? We do the opposite. We're going to be looking at the opposite of the other ones. So plus five, so we've got to add five over here, right? Okay, x is now by itself because minus five plus five equals zero. And then nine plus five is 14. Good job, okay? Now, here we go. We plug it in 14 minus five equals 18 over two. 14 minus five is what? Nine. 18 divided by two, we've already done is nine. Do those equal? Yes, and we can put our check mark, but x equals 14 and that's our answer, right? Okay, so when you get your answer, your x equals 14 and minus six, I want you to circle that answer. That will help you see it, it'll help me see it. Your parents, they'll be like, okay, what, what'd you get for this answer? All I see is a whole bunch of numbers, all of this. But if you circle it, then it'll be very clear which one is the answer, okay? And the check mark just shows that you, you checked it, okay? Now, to do, let's see. Next one is actually this one, okay, that I've got here. So y over three, so that means y divided by three equals 11 minus five, okay? Y divided by three, 11 minus five is what? Six, okay? Now, three is being divided. What is the opposite of division? 
multiplication, okay? So what we're gonna do is we're going to multiply three times y over three, okay? So in this, if you were to think of this a fraction as three over one, right? You could reduce that, basically it would be ones. And you just cross them out, okay? So then we get y by itself, and we can't forget to multiply six times three, right? Because what we did to one side, we have to do to the other. I'm gonna move this down so that hopefully you can see that. Six, my, six times three is what? 18, okay? 18, okay? I'm gonna move this over here and I'm gonna put 18 over three equals 11 minus five, okay? 18 divided by three is what? Should be six, right? And then 11 minus five is also six. And those are equal, okay? Once you've checked it, then I would go back and circle it because then you don't waste your circle until you've made sure that it's actually the right answer. Because if you don't get the same answer, you just go back and you say, okay, what did I do wrong, okay? Over here, this last one, four times t equals eight plus eight, okay? We can't multiply four times t because we don't know the value of t, so we're gonna put 4t down here, and 8 plus 8 is what? 16, okay? So we're multiplying the 4 here. What's the opposite of multiplying? Addition, I'm <laughs> giving you the wrong answer. Division, I'm sorry. I was thinking division and said addition. Division, okay? So if we're gonna divide this, we do that, right? Because that's our division sign. That gets rid of the fours over there, right? So we just have a T. 16 divided by four is four, okay? Then let's see if I can put it right up here. Four times four is equal to eight plus eight. Four times four is 16. Eight plus eight is also 16, and that is correct. And so then t equals four is your answer, okay? Now notice, these, not, these letters were all different, but they all could have been the same letters. We could have had x in for every letter, we could have had n in for any letter, t in. Because we say n equals six in this equation, Next time, n may not equal six, okay? So this is an unknown number, which means we just use it to fill in the place. It's like our question mark that, that we would use before, okay? So this is just our unknown number. Un we use those letters just to show the unknown number there. Um, so don't get confused with that um, because you are gonna come up with, equations that have different numbers for the same letter, and you're gonna think, but it said it equaled this one over here, and now it equals 42, and it equaled 20 before. It, that doesn't matter, okay? These are just for, these are just an unknown number, or un, uh, it's just to represent an unknown number. It doesn't mean that it is that every single time, okay? So in section one, it has you completing the equation. So it lays most of this out for you. So all you're doing is you're, you're saying, okay, well, x plus three equals 27 over nine. So they did x plus three equals three because 27 divided by nine is three. Then they've got x plus three minus three equals three minus three, okay? So then they got x by itself, right? So they took the three off of the side with x, and they put it on to the side with three. But then three minus three is what? Zero, okay? So that first one, x is equal to zero. And so then you're gonna put in the equation, what number equals x? 
zero. So zero plus three equals 27 over nine. So then zero plus three is three. And it says three equals three. And then you get to put the check mark, okay? To show that it is equal. All right, so that was that first one that I filled in for you. Um, and these ones are just, just that. You're just putting in the numbers. So you have to look at that first equation. You have to see what they did and how they got down to where, where they, they did. And so um, on this, I want you to do all of section one and, and I want you to do all of section two. There, there's quite a bit there. On section three, you can pick one or the other. And then section four and five, pick three to do. Okay, three and all of that. And, um, do your best. If these algebraic expressions, these equations are really stumping you and you, you need more further explanation, ask your parents. If they're not understanding, they can always contact me. Um, but this is foundational stuff and we want you to understand it. So please, please, please ask questions if you have them. Um, and if I didn't explain something well enough, let me know. I will try again and we can go from there. All right, um, do well. And there is a homework section for this lesson. So lesson 138, I believe it's page 383 or 384, it's somewhere in that region, but you guys know how to find that. So um, do well and we'll talk with you next time.